from Union Square in downtown San Francisco. It's the Cube covering Pager Duty Summit 18. Now here's Jeff Frick. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Jeff Frick here with the Cube. We're in downtown San Francisco. I can you the Western St. Francis on Union Square, historic property. This beautiful ballroom, lots of brocade and and fancy stuff from another era. But we're talking about this era and the era of information. We're here at Pager Duty Summit, and we're really excited to have one of the keynote speakers, uh, John Allspall, join us. He is the co-founder of Adaptive Capacity Labs. John, great job on the keynote. Thanks. Thanks a lot. I'm I'm uh, I'm glad that it it landed. You know, it's funny. We go to uh, literally hundreds of tech conferences a year and. And, and so often, you know, the tech is talked about, but as you brought up, where's the human factors? Where are the people? Where in all these lovely diagrams, as you pointed out, with beautiful lines and everything is very straight and boxes are very clear, that's not really how the real world works at all. No, you know, yeah, and that's, the, that's what I find really fascinating, which is that um, with a lot of, certainly get a lot of attention to incidents when they show up, outages and that sort of thing, but we don't get a real shot at understanding how non-incidents happen, and they happen all the time, right? right. Outages are being prevented all day long, and uh, and and sort of, and but it doesn't really get our attention, right? And it doesn't get our attention because it seems that seems normal, and that's the sort of the this uh, this assumption that there's like a quiet, uh, you know, sort of background and that an incident is sort of like a punctuation of you know, something bad and that, that otherwise sticks up, you know, like, like Mount Hood, right? Right, right. But the fact of the matter is, there's so much going on. Right. And that's actually, that stuff that's going on is this activity that people are doing to prevent outages continually. And right. That's what I find fascinating. So you really never get like your classic kind of experiment where you can isolate the variables, right? Because uh, they're all completely commingled all the time. Yeah, and that's what that's that's what's fascinating. That what I what I like what we say is that we study cognitive work, um, and the difference between sort of these types of human factors and cognitive uh, work studies, and the difference between that and say sort of classic psychology is classic psychology can be done in a lab. We study cognition in the wild, right, as right. they say. The natural laboratory that is the world. Right. And the other thing I thought you brought up, which was really interesting, is, is really kind of what's the point, right? Is, is the point just to fix it? Is the <laughs> point to try to identify this little thing and fix it? Or is the point, you know, kind of a higher level objective, which is to actually learn so that we're doing the things in the future that keep this thing from happening again? And, and you summarized it really, really well, and you're talking about the postmortem, which you said, you know, are you doing this report to be read, or are you doing it to be filed? Very different objectives. Going to have a very different report at the end of the uh, at the end of the process. Right, right, right. Yeah, and I think that um, I think that that's the sort of the uh, the, the 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 danger is if we uh, is uh, as an industry, I think we just need to bring some attention to that. And the, the the good news is that it's hard work to look at incidents in a different way. It's a way that we're not used to. It's, it's effectively qualitative research. Um, and uh, it's, so it's difficult, but it's, it's not impossible. It can be learned. It can be taught. And um, my hope is that the sort of the, these sorts of bringing attention to the topics will, you know, get people to, 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 to be curious and want to understand more. Right, and it really take it up a notch. And, and I think, again, you have some really uh, easy to implement uh, lessons there. Like, what are the questions? Document the questions yeah. in the postmortem. Document yeah. the concerns in the postmortem. Did those concerns happen? Did they not happen? Why didn't they happen? So really kind of take it up a level from the incident really as kind of a catalyst for a conversation and learning, but that's really not what the foundational effort should be around is fixing that little thing. Right, right. Well, I mean, that's the thing is if, if, the goal is to, if the goal is to fix, then, uh, and that's the, that, is, that is the goal, you're going to find something to fix. It may or may not be, in the, it may or may not be helpful. Um, what you fix, comes from exploring. And, and there, there are things that shouldn't be fixed right now. Everybody's making decisions. I mean, this is the entire premise of Agile, is, which is that uh, continual, iterative, reprioritization, recalibration um, of what's important. Um, so we'll be happy to 
put effort into that, but yet uh, it doesn't. It seems disingenuous to phone it in right. when it comes to understanding incidents. Right. right. <laughs> you got on so many things, we could go forever and ever. One of the things you talked about, and, and it's often spoke about, is you know, winners write the history books. Um, it was really about the bias that you bring to the, a problem. You know, what do you think is the most important? And, and what filter and lens are you both looking at the problem, um, reporting the problem, and then, you know, or diagnosing, and then reporting the problem, which may or may not be root cause, may or may not be the most important thing about that, but you know, those biases influences the way not only is that problem perceived, but then documented, resolved, and talked about after the fact. Really yeah, important. Yeah, absolutely, and there's something really paradoxical about 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 that, and, and, and one of the things that that it brings to mind is is uh, that I don't think that yet we are in a world where we, when I say we, I mean the software industry, um, will bring attention to or report on near misses. The scenarios where you know what you thought you were in uh, dev, but you were in prod, and you ran a command that, if it had a couple of other parameters it would have destroyed everything. But it turns out that actually it, it, was, it was this one, you know, there's a couple of characters made it such that it was a near miss. It wasn't a, you know, it wasn't a big deal. Do you, is that an incident, right? Right, right. So if, on the one hand, you can say, well, well, there were no customer impact. Right. So therefore, let me look up on my, oh, no, that's not an incident. So therefore, we shouldn't pay any attention to it. But, but, Think of any other uh, sort of uh, high tempo, sort of um, uh, high consequence uh, domain. Right. They've learned aviation is a good, a good example. Um, there, there are uh, organizations in aviation that, that will actually, and they find them to be um, incredibly useful because they, they're, they're, they're low, uh, uh, low risk things to pay attention to. Um, it didn't happen this time but we can bring attention to the possibility that we might that it might go poorly <laughs> the next time right so what what triggers the action to recognize that you had a near miss and and is that you know working its way into best practices devops well i mean we i we have i my organization at etsy um, i certainly i will uh, full disclosure i made quite a good number of mistakes at etsy this isn't one of them uh, and um, getting into a habit of, you know, uh, what had happened there was people sending PSA emails, public service announcements. And they were basically, it was basically, uh, the, 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 the format was, hey everybody, check this out. I was doing this and I went to go do blah and I almost exploded everybody. Like that, so, so FYI, if you're doing this, don't do it, everything's cool. I'm going to put in these things to sort of help it out, but until that, until we get that done, be really careful about this part. You know, whatever. Even just that, even small things like that, uh, uh, keep the topic of how precarious these scenarios can be in the minds of people who aren't experiencing incidents. Right. 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 Tomorrow you might be that one, or tomorrow you might be. And so here's your colleague, like taking the time to spend some effort could be saving your bacon tomorrow. Right. right? You might be doing in right, a similar spot. How is it codified and how is it, how, is it, how is it communicated? I mean, so another concept that you touched on, which has a broader implication, but you talked about it specifically, and really that's diversity of opinions leads to better decision making. And, and you gave some examples of, of you know, bringing in disparate members of various teams with different experiences, points of view, yeah. um, to pull out things like the esoteric knowledge, to pull out the institutional knowledge, but yeah. more importantly, to pull out a different point of view. So we hear about it a lot with you know diversity of teams and sex and culture, et cetera, but even within the context of, of solving an engineering problem, um, you know, diversity and points of view does lead to better problem solving. Oh, so I, I want to make, a, uh, I wanna make a, a sort of a, a crisp clarification. Um, it is the variety of perspectives, actually the variety of expertise and the variety of experience, not opinions or perspectives. Perspectives you can probably, that's a word you can probably go with, but I, I, I wouldn't say diversity of opinion. That has a connotation that is, is not 
not, not concrete right enough. Okay. Uh, um, what we're talking about is cognitive work, uh, how people assess. This is a this is something that 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 uh, requires my attention. It requires my attention in these ways, based on my experience with this this uh, particular type of problem over you know this different type different you know variations of it. Right. So um, so yeah, I mean the the the, the general sense is, um, uh, but but. The, the, the phrase diversity of opinion um, generally has a connotation of, of the individual attributes of a person. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the... Uh, These the, are individual attributes that have been gleamed through experience. It's not individual. Role, it's not an attribute. It's experience. It's experience, right. Right, okay. exactly. Okay. Um, an attribute of me is that I'm five foot nine. My experience is that I, I, I have seen Apache break in a myriad of different surprising ways, right? There's the sort of the difference. Right, right the difference, okay. But then the other point you brought up even in that in that conversation was, that, you know, it's always messy, there's always trade-offs is, you know, you get management overhead as soon as you have more than one person working on a problem, right? Now you have communication overhead, you've got management overhead, so now you're pulling resources from actually devoting it to the task at hand of trying to solve the problem versus having to devote resources to bring other people up to speed, communicate, et cetera. So it's not not even a really easy trade-off. Or not uh, yeah. a trade. I mean, but it's, you know, there's consequences to the action. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And again, the, the, I think that um, you uh, uh, coping with complexity requires an equal amount of complexity, right? Um, you might not say that a baseball team that is that is very good at doing double plays. Right, which is a pretty hard thing to pull off, uh, even in professional baseball. Um, you wouldn't. Would you say that the coach is uh, is uh, represents overhead? I don't know if you would say it that way exactly, um, but uh, there's certainly limitations to the sports metaphor. But I, I certainly I, I like uh, very much a renewed emphasis on building, maintaining, and sort of resolving incidents with software as much more uh, 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 benefiting from collaborate, collaboration, collaborative work, Ma right, meaning right. real sort of teamwork, right. not just sort of the uh, sort of sparse collaboration right, and that right. sort of thing. Well, John, it's a it's a fascinating uh, field. We could go on all day long. Of yes, course, we you're going to have to to leave it there. But really, really uh, enjoyed the conversation and Great. also the uh, the keynote earlier today. Great, thanks a lot. All thanks right. for talking. Thank you. He's John. I'm Jeff. You're watching the Cube. We're at PagerDuty Summit at the Weston St. Francis Union Square. Thanks for watching.